and all of God's children said, is he going to be all right? Y'all be seated, please. All right, if you are a regular here, you know how this goes. If you're a guest, welcome. What we like to do before I open the word, we open the word and come together for a little bit, is uh, pray. And it's not just you bow your head and I pray for you. We talk for a little bit. We're small enough. Usually there's only three or four of us here, and so I don't know where y'all have been. I don't know where you're coming from, but, but we talk. Anything that's going on in your life that's a concern, um, don't go on for five minutes because okay, nobody's going to be able to hear you. But you can write it down and give it to me or give it to the prayer team. There are these beautiful old ladies right here. Sweethearts, I'm sorry. You're not old ladies. <laughs> That's terrible. And on Easter. No, don't start. No, no, no. I know. I, I know. <laughs> what do we have to pray about, guys? Yes, Heather. Very good, very good. We've been praying for Madison, her daughter Madison. Very good. Outstanding. And all of God's children said, new job is good. Big Al. Pray for Max. Absolutely, absolutely. Hmm. Yes. Hi, Debbie. Okay, continued prayers there. Thank you, Debbie. And again, write these down. Get them to me. There's prayer cards back there. These are prayed over on a daily basis, and so take the time to do that, please. Anyone else? Yes, Eric. Um, our country in general and our church in particular, uh, obviously we're coming into this. We've been in a time of crisis, and so certainly it's going to amp up. And yeah. Sure we would Absolutely. Um, absolutely. Just be a part of the solution. Uh, absolutely. Thank you, Eric. Yes. Hi. Absolutely. Yes, ma'am. I see a hand over here. I'm sorry. Is there a hand? <laughs> Jane. <laughs> Absolutely. Now I live it, absolutely. Yes, Cindy. That's what I was thinking about. Okay. Okay. Single pastor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, prayers for Danny and Melita. Yeah, Danny's sick and Melita's standing by him, so prayers there. Thank you, brother. Yes, ma'am. Continued prayers for your parents, absolutely. <laughs> prayers for your dad on the road, absolutely. Hi, Jerry. Sure. Mm-hmm. Great niece, you said? Great, great niece. Okay. Prayers there, Cheryl, absolutely. Heather, you've already had two. Okay. Absolutely, yeah. Prayers there. About our, our refugees from asylum, seeking asylum, have found it from here from Nicaragua. Prayers there. We're looking for a place that we thought we had, going to fall through. And then just couch, a bed, a utensil, a spatula, anything like that could help. Yes. Hi, Tina. Okay. Continued prayers there for your health. Absolutely. Young lady, absolutely. If, not as a side note, but if you brought offering this morning, thank you. Most folks just go online to pchot.org, but if you have loose offerings, there's 
a box back there um, labeled offering. Just drop it in there. There's envelopes if you'd like. Either way, thank you. Thank you. And again, thank you for just being here. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we bow our heads every day, every Sunday for sure. Every day I pray, every day I hope. First and foremost, to acknowledge you, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. We turn our attention upward and we try to the degree that is possible to look at your holiness that is beyond, that is more and it is too much, and so we bow our heads. You are God. Everywhere, all-knowing, all-powerful. In the beginning, and who will be in the end, and for those with faith enough to see it, everything in between. You are God. And we bow our heads because we are not. And we have come here, Heavenly Father, seeking you first and foremost, you to celebrate you, to reorient our lives on you and on your truth, but then to do what you called us to do, love each other. That's what we do in a small church, Heavenly Father, and I thank you for that, for the love that is in this room. It's my prayer that by the power of the Spirit, everyone can feel it because it is real, the love that calls us to speak to one another, to care for one another, to pray for one another, to reach out, to provide a casserole, whatever the case may be. Heavenly Father, that is for you. It is from you. And we thank you. I thank you for this church. The body of your Son, who is our Savior. This church that is joined by every ligament available that is here to celebrate the resurrection. This reminder, this truth that life is eternal and that by grace through faith we may accept that eternity. It might be ours. Thank you. Thank you so much. Father, you've heard all the things that have been spoken here. You know the things that have been left unsaid. You know that young man Max, Heavenly Father, be with him and whomever, whether the medical professionals or whoever that is interacting and dealing with him in the name of Jesus Christ, healing and health. Be present and be glorified in that and for all those who are standing with him. Thank you. And now as always, I ask your blessing on the word that is about to be shared. If it is not from you, if it's not for you, may it fall on deaf ears. Be pleased and do what only you can do. Change us. Change us more and more into you more and more into life. In Jesus' name, sweet, sweet name. Amen. All right. I want to start with a story that, a couple of stories that I think are funny. Um, you may need to be a preacher. We good? All right, very good. You may need to be a preacher to think this are funny. I don't know. I might share this with you. And you might think that is totally inappropriate. I don't think he should have said that at all. That's, that's, not, that's not appropriate. And if that's the case, if you find this offensive, I want you to know up in front, I'm very sorry. <laughs> Y'all know I hate to offend you. I just really, I'm so sensitive about that. It, he, he, here we go. Um, every Easter, I come back and I think about this. I was in graduate school. And so it was an absolute million years ago. And a buddy of mine and I had each done our, relative, our first funeral services. You know, the funeral home calls up some kid at the funeral home or the seminary and says, come on, and, and some point to you, and off you go. we just done our first funeral services, and we're swapping war stories. He had showed up at the funeral home, and it was an open casket sort of a situation. And the family was burying this guy. Um, we're in rural Texas. They were burying him a pair of overalls and a T-shirt um, to each his own. Now, in one hand, they had a Mountain Dew in his hand. They'd put a Mountain Dew, and I'm not kidding you. And in the other hand, there was a pack of smokes. So apparently he loved some, some scud and, and, and some smokes. I thought, all right. And all the family really told me, my buddy said, was that he just loved to smoke 
and he loved some Mountain Dew. Now, the funeral director had come up to him and informed him that at the end of the service, what the family had requested was that they play the song Wipeout. Do you guys remember the song? I had Ben grab a clip just so you could be remembered. Here, play that for me, would you? That's good. Stop it. And now may the Lord bless you and may he keep you. That was, that was my boy's first funeral. And now it was my turn to tell him, said, I don't want to one-up you, dog. I don't want to one-up you. But I, had a, I have a story, too. I had just done my first, and mine was an open casket as well, which was outside. I did an open casket funeral outside, which I didn't know was different at the time. I mean, how was I supposed to know we're outside? They had laid this guy to rest in a cowboy shirt, kind of with snaps on it, and a baseball cap. And I thought, it's fine, he looks fine, it's, 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 it's all clean, everything was fine. Except on this particular day, it was stupid, stupid windy. It was stupid, we are in Texas, on top of a hill, there are no trees. There are no trees and it is windy. So I want you to imagine this. The canopy over the whole grave is flopping. I'm not kidding, it's a flopping like a sail in the wind. The casket, which is open, the lid is, is locked open, is swaying ever so slightly in the wind, right? And I, <laughs> and this is the inappropriate part. Every once in a while, a strong gust would make his baseball cap quiver. <laughs> just, just make that baseball cap move just a little bit. Now, this would have been bad enough. It would have been bad enough. And mind you, again, this is true. But this man's wife, bless her heart, Jesus loves her, was a lot of woman. She was a whole lot of woman, and she's laying all over this casket, just carrying on. And I'm standing there thinking to myself off to the side, this is bad. <laughs> My first, this is really, really bad. Something bad is fixing to happen here, right? I keep trying to back up a little bit. The funeral director comes up behind me, and he says, you need to do something. <laughs> I said, what do you want me to do? He said, well, you say something. I said, what am I supposed to say? What exactly should I say? Because all I'd been told about this guy, basically, was that he loved to fish. I love to fish. Peter was a fisherman. I suppose I could say that. I, I don't know. I, 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 so there I go. He loved to fish. And now may the Lord bless you <laughs> and keep you and make his face and say, may you catch fish. All right? And welcome to the ministry. Welcome to the ministry. There you go. Now, I want you to understand. These two old boys might have been extraordinary men of faith. I have no clue. I mean, all my buddy and I knew at the time is what I've told you now. But every Easter, I think about that conversation. I think about those stories. And I want you to come here with me. Imagine if the last words to be said over your casket. What if the last words anybody could say with any integrity whatsoever over you or wipe out. Or he loved to fish. This is where I need you to come here. I mean, what are the words that you hope people will be able to say over your casket someday? If there is some young, wet behind the ears, idiot preacher standing there, what do you want him to be able to say? I mean, he's going to want to give God some glory. He's going to want to provide that family with some words of hope. But what with honesty? Because everybody standing there is going to know the truth. What with honesty is he going to be able to say over you? I want to read a little bit of our story. I want you just to listen to the word of God. This is taken from the Gospel of Luke. I want to be in the 24th chapter. Listen here for the word of God. Listen. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women had took spices and they would prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes gleamed like white lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He's not here. He's not here. He is risen. 
Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. And then they remembered his words. Now, I want you to think about this with me. That tomb, that cave they'd put him in, was for all intents and purposes his casket. That tomb, that cave was his casket. That's where they put him on Friday, is in that casket. And come Sunday, the last words that could be said over that man's casket, over his casket, were for all intents and purposes, he ain't here. Jesus is not here. And I don't know about you, but, but that is exactly what I'd like to be said over my casket someday. He's not here. I mean, I will be, my body will be there for now, but I tell you what, and that's a big box. That is a particularly long box for that man. That is one long casket. But he, but Michael, is not here. Those are some good last words, amen? Let me ask you again. What would you like to be able to be said over you someday? Guys, the possibility of heaven, that hope, that reality for literally millions of people throughout the generations is exactly why we're here. That's Easter. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. By grace, by God's grace, through faith, through your faith, if you have it, he's not here. And neither will you be. When your time comes, and it will come, neither will you be. That's all that really needs to be said this morning. Again, that's Easter. That's the Easter message. But, but... Since I am paid by the word, I am going to say some more. <laughs> Y'all didn't know that, did you? <laughs> Sit still, this could take a while. Um, last Friday, on a day that we dare to call Good Friday, in the death and resurrection of our, our Lord, in just the death of our Lord, what we saw was, was love on this dreary little patch of land called Judea, God appeared, and he lived, and he loved, and he taught, and he laughed. In fact, he was love. And for that, we, humanity, they killed him. And it was the worst kind of death that was ever devised by the human mind. You see, before he was actually hung on the cross, he was beaten with a whip until the skin was removed from his back. And then he was hung on that cross in absolutely terrifying pain. And yet somehow, Scripture tells us, that through it all, he thought of his mother, he thought of his disciples, and he thought of you. He thought of you. You see... I believe that as the Lord hung from that cross, he did something that only God can do. I believe that your name and mine crossed his mind, that, it, that your face flashed in his mind in those final moments. Your face flashed before his eyes. I want you to look at this verse. Now, when he says forgive them, he's, of course, talking to the people that are there. But because that is the Son of God hanging from that cross... He also means you. He means forgive you, Andy. Forgive you, Eric. Forgive you, Mark. Forgive you. He means forgive all of us. And in an instant, we were. We saw love. This morning, Easter, though, shows us something completely different. And the fact that, that he, that Jesus was not there, that he was risen, that that tomb was empty, shows us that life is eternal. That these lives that we've been given are eternal. And that's for all people throughout all time. For everyone, our lives, all of us were created for forever. Physical death is only a comma in the eternal sentence of life. And the more we understand this, the more we live in light about this, the more it changes everything. I used a quote from Rick Warren about this years and years ago that I wanted to use again this morning, and I couldn't find it. I couldn't find the context. I wanted to read the context, and for the life of me, I couldn't find my book, Purpose Driven Life. I knew Lindy had had a copy. I had seen it at her place, and so I went over and found it 
It was cute because it, she'd signed it in 2011, Lindy. And I'm reading through it, and, and, and this years ago, and so I'm reading through it, and what I thought was really neat was she'd highlighted the very bits that I had wanted to find and read to you. I, I want you to listen to this. When you fully comprehend that there's more to life than just the here and now, and you realize that life is just preparation for eternity, you begin to live differently. You will start living in light of eternity. And that will color how you handle every relationship, every task, and every circumstance. Suddenly, many activities, goals, and even problems that seem so important will appear trivial, petty, and unworthy of your attention. The closer you live to God, the smaller everything else appears. She would highlighted that. I thought it was beautiful. The closer you live to God, the smaller everything else appears. When you live in light of eternity, your values change. Your time, you use your time and your money more wisely. You place a higher premium on relationships and character instead of fame or wealth or achievements or even fun. Your priorities are reordered. Keeping up with trends, fashions, and popular values just doesn't matter that much anymore. As Paul said, I once thought all these things were so very important, but now I consider them worthless because of what Christ has done. Once more, Easter shows us that all of life is eternal, which means that how we live now matters. The decision that we make now, the things that we do now, they echo into eternity. That they're not wasted. This life right now, right now, actually really matters. Which is incredible news because sometimes trying to do the right thing isn't easy. Sometimes life just isn't fair and trying to remain faithful through that is really, really hard so that life goes on and that ultimately and always love wins is great news. It's really great news. But that all of life goes on. And I want you to listen to those words I'm using. That all of life goes on can also be terrifying news. I want to invite the band to come back up here. And that's going to be distracting for them to do that. But I want you to listen to me because I owe you this. I owe you what I'm about to say. And this is very, very important. We're almost done, so stick with me. C.S. Lewis said there are two kinds of people. There are those who say to God, thy will be done. And there are those to whom God says, okay, have it your way. He goes on, C.S. Lewis goes on, tragically, many people will have to endure an eternity without God because they chose to live without Him here on earth. I don't think I say this probably as much as I should. But in this life, there are a lot of options. There are a lot of choices that you can make in this life. But into the next one, this life continued. In eternity, there are only two. You got two choices. You going to go with God? Or are you going to go without? It's just that plain. It's just that black and white. In essence, you want heaven? Or do you want hell? You see, the forgiveness that Jesus offered on that cross was offered to everybody, to absolutely everybody, but not everybody accepts it. Some don't know they need it. Some don't think they need it. Some think this whole religion thing is stupid. It's just stupid. It's a crutch for weak, stupid people. But none of that changes the fact. It doesn't matter what you think. <laughs> None of that changes the fact that all of life is eternal. It's all eternal. And that we all wind up, every one of us, with only two choices. Do you want heaven or do you want hell? Do you need a Savior? And is that Savior Jesus Christ? And the decision that you make now absolutely matters. I'll end here. Please hear me say this. This is an assumption, a decision that we a lot of times assume. We grew up in this community, in this culture, and sure, 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 I believe, sure, sure, oh, caps, I absolutely, back in Sunday school, whatever, whatever. Don't leave any doubt about this. Be clear about this. Make 
sure your loved ones know about this. If you think they do, tell them again. I believe. Tell them again. I need a Savior, and Jesus is it. Tell them now. Tell me if you want to. Tell somebody. Tell somebody. Make the decision and tell somebody because the last thing you want, the last thing your family wants, when everything is said and done, is to have some idiot like me standing over the top of you. And the only thing I know to say about you is you love to fish. Don't be that guy. Don't be that guy. Don't do that to your family. It's really not funny. Don't do it to yourself. I want you to listen to this song. I'll invite you up for communion afterwards. But just listen to the words of this song. I think they fit perfectly. Thank you. 